Hey everyone, it's Jacqueline from Long Army by Jacqueline and for our pattern test of the last race of the season, which is my latest pattern release, we are up to block seven called Piney Fresh. And for this block, you will need strips, strips and strips and strips of um, a color group that I am calling Cool Greeny Blues. Um, of course, you can set your own color when you make the pattern. Cool Greeny Blues and then your low volume or background color. And again, the secret to this um, quilt is a sort, a sort, a sort. You want it scrappy, so find some variety. And I will say there's a couple of ways to approach this block. So um, let's have a talk. There's a term out there called poverty piecing. And you hear that term, you know exactly what it means. And that's the common term, but I don't love it. I don't live for that term. So I prefer to say Franken piece um, because I don't think it's necessarily a mark of um, need. It does nod to the origins of quilting and patchwork was to um, take something that was ostensibly waste and make something valuable and beautiful from something that would not have been. So I, I don't know that it's necessarily derogatory, but I just don't love the term. So Franken piece, which means take little bits and bobs of fabric, join them together to make other fabrics. So in this case, I could take all of my cool greeny blues group and I could chop these into smaller segments and sew them together and make a long, scrappy super scarf, similar to the way we did for the drops to create the scrappy look of that block, where there's sort of random seams and a mixture of fabrics and you're creating your own print from a variety of similar fabrics. So I call that Franken piecing. I'm not gonna be mad at you if you say poverty piece, but I just don't love the term. So you could do that. You could make a scrappy super scarf. I could chop all of these into shorter segments and join them end to end and allow the seams between the colors to fall randomly in the block. Um, or what I think I'm going to do for the block today is, um, so this block is in layers of strip pieced units. And for each layer, I'm going to use a different print so that they come together and form a texture across the block. But in each row, I'll just have the one fabric. I don't know, I'll make a couple and see if that looks a little too boring or if they're coming together for me. And if I like it, I'll keep going. And if I feel like it's a little too monochromatic, then I'll probably go and franken piece and make my own custom prints by combining other prints and make it even scrappier. So don't be afraid to really go wild. And look, I call this group cool greeny blues. One could argue that this isn't very cool and it's almost a yellow. This print has got almost to like an orange note in the center, it's an ombre. And um, these are definitely leaning more blue, but I think in combination, the effect of the group overall, my main qualification was that it kind of fit the bill of cool greeny blues and that there's enough contrast with the saturation of these and the saturation of these. I had a few grays that I thought would be beautiful as backgrounds, but they were too medium relative to these. And I had a few more pastel greens that probably would have fit color-wise, but they didn't provide enough of a pop next to the low volumes. So that's how I got my groups, and that's where we are. So I've already cut the strips, um, and I am just going to get started with construction of this block. So after sub cutting my strips into the lengths given in the pattern, I went ahead and picked an assortment for my first block that is nice and scrappy. So my three different low volume units and my three different piney units are all different from each other. And then I'm gonna line them up. So um, for this particular unit, I need the seam to go down. So you wanna take your low volume or your background strip and lay that face up first. And if this were a longer strip, it would be sticking out toward your left. And then you take your cool greeny blue piney group strip 
And since I want my seam going down, I want my strip going down. And then I will sew off the tips. So if you um, need to go ahead and draw that line, go ahead. Imagine your long ends of your strip coming out this way, and you're gonna sew off the short tips here. So take that to your machine. So I recommend you press back and check before you cut anything and make sure you get the seam you think you want. So here we are, we sew that at the machine. And if you are reading from left to right, starting from your background side, the seam is going down. So this is a down seam and that came out the right way. So we'll go ahead and trim that and press that back. So for this middle unit, I've got tails on both sides and it's a little bit easier to see. So I've started with my low volume strip unit face up and then I take my pine group cool greeny blues face down and I'll be sewing off the short tips, keeping the long tails. And coming back from the machine with that sewn, if I open it up and read low volume to print, I've got my seam going down. So that checks out. Give her a press. So that's the basic skill to making this block. Other than that, it's just following the chart in the pattern. So this collection of strips will then be joined to make the small left tree. So the tree is on the left and the block is the smaller block. So you'll just join these rows and I recommend pressing up. And there's my first piney fresh block. I'll just flip it to the back and press each of the seams up. And for the diagonal seams, this is a floating seam. So that is really quilter's choice. If you want to press those open or to the dark side or to either side, it really is going to um, not matter because they're not going to nest to anything. So that is a few of the fun scrappy variations that you can come up with. So this is um, in the chart, this is the small left tree. You can see there's the original one. The tree is on the left, it's the smaller of the blocks. And you'll just make those according to the details in the pattern and have fun digging out and scrapping up and assort, 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 giving yourself a lot of fun texture and color in your fabric choices. So with this block, you are gonna be trimming lots and lots of decent sized triangles from the tips. So if you are one who likes a quilter's harvest, go ahead and sew a second seam, one half inch from the first seam that you did, trim in between the two seams and you will automatically have some, some tiny half square triangles or you can do like I did and just trim them off and throw them into your crumb bin. And don't forget for some of the smaller units, you can go in and raid your pre-cuts if you run out of enough assorted different fabrics from any of your color groups. Um, these smaller pieces can be harvested from orphaned pre-cut bits that didn't get used in the quilt that you bought it for, or just go in and snatch from a new one and rob from it. So I like to sew this type of block in Rondo, which is sort of chain piecing and sort of not. So here's what I mean. Because I want to keep both sides scrappy, the low volume and the greens, I want to do my layout of all of my blocks at once so I can decide if I want to move a piece from one block to the other and get my assortment nice and good. And then as I'm sewing, I don't want to lose the sequence of blocks that I have laid out. So what I'll do is I will sew the first seam and the first seam and the first seam 
So that's exactly like chain piecing. Then from the tail end of my chain, I'm gonna snip just the first block, bring it back, grab the next piece. Snip off just the first block from the end of my tail of chain piecing, and that'll be this unit, and grab the next piece. And then if I keep snipping one block and grabbing one unit and keep going, it'll keep all of my pieces in order with my scrappy particular layout that I took so much time designing and keep it all together in an order. So I keep my place as I progress through the blocks.